We had a terrible mass shooting that took place in Orlando yesterday. Uh, this is from the New York Times. Five people at a business near Orlando, Florida, were fatally shot by a former employee who went through a warehouse, singling out his victims before killing himself, the Orange County Sheriff's Department said on Monday. Sheriff Jerry L. Demings told reporters that deputies arrived at the businesses Fiamma Inc. a few minutes after 8 a.m. on Monday after receiving a call about an active shooting. All five of the victims were employees of Fiamma, which makes awnings and accessories for recreational vehicles. The sheriff said four of them, three men and a woman, were found dead with deputies when deputies arrived, he said. A fifth person, a man, was transported to a hospital where he died. The sheriff identified the gunman as Robert Neumann Jr., 45 years old, who had been fired from his job at Fiamma in April. He had shot and killed himself by the time law enforcement arrived, Sheriff Demings uh, said. So, um, this guy was in the military in the 1990s. Um, he did the shooting with a semi-automatic weapon. And years earlier, cops were called to stop a violent incident that involved him at that place when he worked there. So there were a lot of red flags here. And, you know, this is an issue where I'm guilty of it. And I think a lot of us are guilty of it, where we don't really discuss it enough because over 90 Americans die every day as a result of run-of-the-mill gun violence. Um, it's over 32,000 Americans die every year. That's worse than some war zones. Like, over 32,000 Americans die every year from gun violence. Now, that includes everything. That includes homicides, suicides, accidents, you name it. But still, over 12,000 of them are homicides. That's so far above and beyond every other modern nation that it's... Just, an amazing statistical outlier. I mean, other modern nations have less than 100 gun deaths. So, there's a problem here. And, again, it's not really discussed in any serious way because it's just because, ah, well, a lone nut. And to be fair, it is a lone nut. Like, that's what it is. This guy's a lone nut. But the numbers of the lone nut mass shootings add up way more than terrorism, for example. Way more. Way above and beyond terrorism. I mean, what was it, seven people that died and dozens injured in the London terror attack? Look at the press that got versus this. This was in and out of the news cycle before lunch. So, we have a little bit of a disproportionate, like, we, we have this thing where we don't put the focus where it is most logical to put the focus. Uh, and that's kind of sad because then problems like this never get addressed. Now, by the way, there's no... Like, there's no foolproof thing that could stop all terror attacks and could stop all mass shootings. There's only policies you can do that limit them. And y you have concerns that you have to worry about as well when trying to do that, like civil liberties and rights. And you have to make sure you keep civil liberties and rights intact while also addressing the problem in a substantive way. And sometimes that's difficult. So here in the U.S., we have the Second Amendment and, and people... Many people love their guns, and you know what? I don't want to take away guns from law-abiding uh, Americans. I just don't. I just don't want to do it. Because I don't... You didn't do the killing. You know, you're know, you not the problem. Um, if you're a law-abiding gun owner and you go hunting, for example, get some food for your family, who the fuck am I to judge? Of course you could do that. That's probably even more humane than the fucking gross factory farms that are out there. Um, but should there be, for example, a universal background check? Yes. Would that have stopped this one? I don't know. But there's a possibility. How do I know there's a possibility? I just told you. So he was in the military in the 90s. He did the shooting with a semi-automatic weapon. But years earlier, cops were called to stop a violent incident involving him at the same place. So if we had a comprehensive universal background check, Bill, maybe somebody who had this, uh, you know, a violent incident in his past, and I'm sure there were other signs there that he was a little off his rocker, maybe we could have been able to stop him. Just maybe. Just maybe. And maybe that was enough. Because then the Dodges, people say, well, that's in ineffective because then you're just going to have these people go to the black market and get the guns. And the answer to that is, yes, that's true. In some cases. But if you could cut down the incidents 50%, which is very likely, you'd probably even cut down more than that. Like if only 20% of the people who get 
blocked from getting a gun, then go to the black market to get it. Okay, 80% of the people didn't get the gun. So, all I want, and I think all many reasonable people want, is just moderate, reasonable gun reform. Universal background check is number one, you know, and then maybe a ban on high capacity magazines. Um, it's not asking that much. Now, again, I don't think that in this case it would necessarily have stopped it, but it might have. And in many cases, it would have stopped it. So, I don't know. I think that's important, and I don't think we talk about this issue nearly as much as we need to when over 32,000 people die every year as a result of this. The issue should be a little uh, more pressing on people's minds, especially when we have much fewer people die from terrorism, and that gets such disproportionate coverage that it's mind-blowing.